Hi, this is Rich Harrington of PS Shortcuts over on Twitter, and I've got another video tip for you. Now, a lot of folks are very interested in the black and white command in Photoshop, and I just really want to show you how to get more with it done quickly. Now, let me also say this is a live tip, so there's no editing. If I flub, I flub. So, <laughs> let's give it a shot. I'm going to go ahead and add a black and white adjustment layer. Now, you'll find that over here in the Adjustments panel, and if you're using an older version of Photoshop, just choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Black and White. We'll go ahead and toss that on, and by default, it applies a standard black and white adjustment. Now, by itself, this isn't that sexy. You can go ahead and, of course, just do an adjustment layer to desaturate, but what you really want to take advantage of here is the different mixing of the different color channels to create a better black and white. Now, to get you started, there's a bunch of presets. If you just click this drop-down menu, you'll see that there are filters that, in this case, blocking out the blues or making a maximum black nice and rich, high contrast. And, of course, we can do other things like neutral density, etc. So there's a whole list here that you can pick from. I'm going to go back to default for a second, though, and utilize this tool here, which is useful. It allows you to select a color that you want to modify. So I can click on that and then come on over here and click. And as I drag, Notice the magenta is affecting that part of the flower. So if I turn that adjustment layer off, we'll see that what I'm going after there are these leaves up here. So that worked out well. And let's go ahead and just drag a little bit on those. And I'm getting the type that I want. Let's click on the leaf here, which is affected by the green, and I can brighten that green up or really darken it down so we have some contrast there between the purple leaves and the green leaves. And that looks pretty good should say petals, but you know what I mean. And we can continue that as we go through, going after individual areas within the image and affecting a very custom black and white adjustment, which is nice. Now, if you have one that you like, you can, you know, of course, reuse this here and just save this adjustment layer and drag it on another image. We also have the option to click Tint, and this allows you to do sepia tones by default, but really, you could select just about any color you want. I want to show you a little trick here. I'm going to turn this layer off and click Tint and actually sample the purple here in the leaf. Now, in order to get that right, let's hit Cancel for a second. I should select that layer and let's see if we can make this actually work. Click Tint and come on, grab it, and it's going to be difficult for me. So, lovely. Hold down the Command key though and it actually worked. See, that's a nice little trick there. Because I had this layer selected and I'm clicking with the eyedropper, it technically thinks the adjustment layer is filled with white. And that's what this little mask represents. So as I'm clicking and clicking trying to sample the purple, nothing happened. But when I held down the command key, it chose to sample all layers. So I can grab that very specific purple right there and click OK. So now my tint value is actually that purple. And we can go ahead and just lighten that up a little bit but get a nice sepia tone, or I should say a duo tone, using that color. And that looks good. Let's click OK. I like that. You can always back that off if you wanted to. But it's a nice way to really customize this a bit further if you're trying to go for sort of an aged look. And I like that there. So you can always turn that off and on with tint, but that works very, very well. And remember, if you want to tweak something like the green leaves here, we could still go after those, and I'm just going to darken those down further for more contrast. So, that's the black and white adjustment layer. Very, very useful. And uh, take advantage of that inside of Photoshop. Oh, by the way, I am live at Photoshop World. Just got into my hotel room. This is Rich Harrington. I invite you to check out our new Understanding Photoshop iPhone app over in the iTunes Store. And I'm going to try to line up other instructors this week for guest tutorials. Thanks again.